Hello, my name is Lisedi and you are watching Joburg Today. The big issue this week is the safety of Uber drivers. Uber, the name many consumers have come to love. It is synonymous with convenience, tech savvy and affordable. Disruptors in public transport, their journey has been bittersweet. As the company managed to woo consumers, they've been fiercely opposed to by competitors in the taxi industry. Recently, though, Uber driver partners protested outside the Uber offices in Parktown, North Johannesburg, claiming that their lives are seriously at risk following the implementation of Uber's cash service. We were there at the protest and chatted to several Uber drivers. Later, I also had a follow-up chat with an Uber driver representative, Teresa Munchik. This weekend, just forget about waiting. Forget about 25% of Uber. I'm tired. Essentially, everything came to a head today following a decision taken by Uber partners under the movement to hold a go slow by barricading a road here in Parktown North. What happened also was that the taxi meter drivers also decided to go on a protest today against Uber drivers. But there are a lot more concerns coming through from the Uber partner drivers as we discovered through our interactions with them. They are here gathered outside the Uber offices to express to management their concerns around safety and security issues. Basically, they believe their lives are in serious danger every day they are out on the job. One of the very important things is um, these cash trips that have been introduced. There's no um, safety in check. So people don't have to have their ID on the system. So when the guys get hijacked, they, you know, there's no way to trace them. So basically, hijackers no longer have to wait in someone's driveway. They just sign up with Uber and they order a vehicle. Guys have been getting hijacked. Some guys have been murdered. The public doesn't hear about this. And on a daily, daily basis, Uber drivers are being intimidated by meter taxis, their cars beaten, them beaten, um, and this hasn't come to the attention of the press. Got violated by one of the um, taxi guys, which was last week, Sunday, uh, when I dropped off a client in uh, Rodiport. Uh, he questioned me as to why do I drive in their, in their route. And then uh, he took out a gun and then I had to apologize and told him that uh, there was not, uh, I didn't know that it's their route. And then he uh, then called the guards from the office as they wanted to take the car. And then when he was on the phone, I then managed to uh, run away with the car. They never listen to anybody. If you come and say, look, here's a problem that I'm, uh, I'm experiencing. I had my car smashed by the meter taxi operators. They'll say, OK, sorry that it happened to you. Just, um, just minor sorry that happened to you. So the next thing that, uh, that's going to happen, they won't even take any f step further. They're just going to simply deactivate you and you're going to have to sort out your car, your own car, out of your own pocket. There have been a lot of people who, who had their cars smashed, who've been so victimized, who've been so intimidated by the taxi drivers, we even the meter taxi drivers. We had a lot of people who even um, lost their, their, their belongings in their car. They had their, their phones taken away. Some even got killed for that matter as uh, um, Uber, uh, Uber drivers working on the, on the very platform. Teresa Manchik, welcome. Great to see you again. The last time we met, it was at the protest. Emotions were running quite high. But there was uh, some sense of optimism coming through from yourself and other representatives of a way forward between Uber partners and uh, Uber management. Well, has um, there been any progress? <laughs> Unfortunately, Uber uh, management refused to um, meet with us and recognize us. We did land up having a meeting with them, which was mediated by the Parkview police. But I think it was a case of, you know, the Parkview police made them come to sit down with us, um, you know, so that we don't cause any further disruption. That sounds a bit hectic that you had to have the, poli have to have the police uh, present to have that meeting. Yeah, um, you know, the crazy thing about it is that we're actually wanting to work with Uber um, to, you know, identify problems, work on solutions. So it's not, you know, it's not a matter of that we trying to oppose Uber or cause mm. trouble. And it's just absolutely crazy that they had to, it had to take police to get them down to sit down and talk to us. What is the policy between 
Uber management and the driver partners when it comes to highlighting issues, concerns? Okay, they don't recognise any groups at all, or unions or guilds. Um, we, we are not a union or a guild, we're just a grassroots movement. Um, but around the world they um, only recognise individuals. Um, we feel that, uh, you know, individuals don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what we're wanting to do is give drivers a voice and help them address issues. These are quite serious issues that you are raising. Uh, what other attempts have you made for your voice to be heard by Uber management? Um, we made a couple of calls. We had a number of one of the uh, top management people and they refused to talk to us. Um, we sent someone with a memorandum. They refused to accept the memorandum. Uh, eventually we went uh, with escorted by the Parkview police and their legal representative um, accepted the memorandum because we were there with the police but he didn't sign for it um, and at no stage have they recognised that in fact it you know, is a memorandum and, and we did give it to them. Please reiterate your, con your security concerns. Um, the security is actually at a crisis point. It's, um, in just 10 days there's been three drivers that we know hijacked on cash trips. Um, we know only approximately 400 drivers and Uber says there's 4,000 drivers. So if, you know, the percentage must be pretty horrifying. Um, that's one of the biggest concerns. Um, with that, you know, we feel that the cash trips, we understand why they introduced the cash trips. Um, however, they've got no uh, safety check in place. So. You know, other things like Airbnb, they'll take your passport and, uh, you know, they'll cross-reference it, ID. Um, however, these cash trips, basically, um, we're sitting ducks because guys can just call an Uber, mm -hmm. they sign up, a SIM card and an email address is all you need. Mm -hmm. And then you can even choose what car you want. You know, you can order, <laughs> order an Uber, and if you don't like that car, you order another Uber. And there's no way to trace these guys. And it's, it's really just been horrendous, and we believe it is a crisis. Have you tried reaching out to Uber head office in the United States? Uh, we have no, no means. Um, Uber, South Africa does refer cases to their international office and sometimes the international office will reach out to a driver if something has happened, um, but not all the time and we don't have any access. So as, essentially as an, as an Uber driver partner, you feel vulnerable every day out on the job? Absolutely. And you know, the cash hijackings are the most horrendous. But, you know, people are getting their cars or being smashed by metered taxis. They're getting beaten. Um, the other night a driver was beaten in Bramfontein. Um, five uh, metered taxis mm. guys um, were attacking him. And, you know, he had to have stitches and really in a bad way. Another, um, another driver in Pretoria a couple of weeks ago, his car was set alight. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's... What is the way forward, Teresa? Given that Uber management, um, judging from what you've just said, they've turned a deaf ear to your concerns, to your fears around security. What is the way forward as the movement when it comes to um, enforcing what rights you may have? Um, that's a very difficult question because around the world, Uber um, says that we're independent contractors. So unfortunately, we don't have much kind of legal right, um, which is partly why we were reaching out to Uber and saying, you know, please let us work with you because, um, you know, we do have kind of suggestions. Right now, um, we have like WhatsApp groups. So if someone's in, um, in trouble, they can post something on the WhatsApp group and we get um, as many cars that are in the area to go and assist them, uh, which actually happened the other night with the Bromfontein incident. Um, a number of, of Ubers managed to go and, and help the guy and Uber security apparently arrived only after he'd been to the police station and to be stitched up at hospital, is from what I hear. Do you feel that you're now at a dead end? Um, we are looking at... Or are at you going to keep up the fight? 
we're going to keep up the fight. Wars weren't won in a day. Um, and we are kind of looking at various things that we can do. But what is quite exciting is we've decided that in the meantime, we can do some proactive stuff. So no Uber driver really has life cover or um, funeral policies or any medical cover. And we're busy looking into that, which I think, um, you know, would make a, a huge, huge difference. Can you um, just say no to the cash trips? Unfortunately, this is one of the worst issues, is that you don't know if it's a cash trip or not. Mm. And someone from Uber management actually said on the radio, um, one night there was um, people calling in, and he said, oh, um, we have a choice to do cash trips, we don't at all. Um, if you, on an Android, you can uh, go press arrived, which you shouldn't really do, but that way you can see if it's a cash trip. And then on an iPhone, you can't see until you start the trip. So, um, and then to make things even worse, what's been happening is drivers have been cancelling cash trips because it's their safety on the line. Mm. And Uber's been um, deactivating them for cancelling too many trips. So that was something that we managed to get in at the meeting. And I think that they weren't aware of, and I think that they are re-looking. So, you know, I think we, we are making some progress, but it would be a uh, much, uh, much better situation if they had to just sit down with us and try and work together on this. I'm John Tarode and you're watching Joburg Today. Like us on Facebook, joebooktoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at joebooktoday. And that brings us to the end of the show. For more coverage on the city, do check out our playlist. And that's it from Inoshina. Have a good one. <laughs>